Hi everyone, my name is Matt Murphy. I'm a member of the Zorbitz Math Adventure Education Team. And I want to welcome you to the first of a series of tutorial videos designed to help you get set up, show you around the platform a little bit, and how to use these tools to set your class up for success when it comes to math learning beyond the walls of the classroom. In this first video, we're going to take a bit of a tour and have a look at a bunch of the different tools. And in subsequent videos, we're going to dig a bit deeper into each of these, uh, these different tools, as well as some best practices, some implementation tips. But for now, let's take a quick tour of the Zorbitz platform. So I'm in my teacher dashboard at dashboard.zorbitzmath.com. I want to create a class and we're going to call this home learning. And it's going to be a grade one class. Now that I have it created, I'm going to fill it with some students. So I come to my class roster and I enter my students' names. I can add as many students as I like. Uh, and when I'm done, I can click Enroll Students, and it generates their username and password. Now, I can get this information into students' hands using our parent letters. So I can print off a full set of parent letters, which will generate one for every student in the classroom with their personalized login information. Or I can grab them one at a time, which is probably a better way to, uh, to email them home because they're going to be attachments as emails. So when you've downloaded a parent letter, this is what they look like. They have some information on how to access the game, what Zorbitz is all about and how to play, and of course that login information for their, for their kids. But once they're playing, I want to make sure that it's a guided game experience. I want to make sure that you know they're focusing on activities that I want them focusing on. So in my game controls, I can select which areas of the game the students have access to. It's a grade one class, and I've already told the classroom as such. So the kindergarten, grade two, and grade three areas are already turned off. But I can also configure which planets or which strands I want them focusing on. I can do this for the entire class or I can set it for individuals as well. But to send home even more guidance and intervention, this assignments tool is a great way to create uh, custom in-game missions. So I want to focus on measuring length, for example. This is a grade one concept on the measurement planet. From this pull down menu, I can select what concepts I want to focus on. Uh, I can select up to 10, but I want to keep it focused. So we're just going to focus on uh, length and comparing and measuring them. And I'm going to add a few activities for each one. I'm going to assign this to the entire class, although I can create variations and send them to smaller groups of students. And then I set a due date or a, a time frame which this mission is available to them in the, uh, in the class. You know what? I want to start this today and I want it to go to the end of next week. When it's done, the mission has been delivered to the student accounts. When they log into the game, they're going to see this mission waiting for them. And as they start to play, I'm going to keep track of the progress that they're making. I'm going to get some real-time performance da data that's going to help inform what my next steps are. I'm going to create another assignment next week, and this data is going to help, help me decide whether it's going to be uh, foundational skills to help struggling students to do another one on measuring length so that we can... Uh, solidify some of that learning, or maybe just move on to the next topic. Maybe I want to do all three and create three different assignments for different groups of students. It's a great way to keep your curriculum plan on the rails and to help uh, stay connected with your class and implement some of them in those intervention strategies. Another way we can stay connected with our students at home is through our teaching activities library. We want some offline activities as well and maybe some interesting conversation starters for around the, uh, the dinner table. So this library of activities is a great source of uh, games and activities and things to send home that the families can play together or they can be, uh, the students can explore them uh, independently. And they all come with guiding questions, very easy to follow instructions, and they use a lot of resources that you know can be uh, found around the house. So, so they're pretty easy for families to implement. So that was a quick tour of some of the tools that you'll find inside your teacher dashboard uh, and some of the ways that we can use them to guide math learning, even when our students are home. Uh, in subsequent videos, we'll go into a bunch of these different best practices and implementation techniques in a little bit more detail. detail so stay tuned for those. Till then, we'll see you next time.